Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Marco and as some of you know, I'm a senior software engineer and I live in Oslo, Norway. So in this video, I wanted to cover a topic that I get asked a lot about and that is how much money I actually make from my job. And also while we are talking about that, I wanted to cover the living expenses here in Oslo, Norway. There is a really cool website called Glassdoor and I'm gonna use it for uh, reference purposes. So here's what the base salary looks like and it's denominated in Norwegian kroner, but the easy way to compute that in, for example, US dollars is to just divide by 10. So basically this would be like $83,000 a year. Here you can see the pay scale and for myself, it's somewhere in the sort of lower half of this scale and that accounts for base pay. And then because I work at Kahoot, we also have stock options in the company which when added to my base pay will kind of get me towards the middle of this range. Now, it's not very exact because the stock price moves a lot. It used to be a lot higher, but right now when I add it to my base pay, it comes out around average. Now, if you look at other companies here in Norway, some of them pay significantly better. For example, Microsoft and other big companies. I think overall, if you just look at this number here, it's pretty accurate for a lot of software engineers. Like Norway specifically is very famous for having uh, very average salaries in all companies and in all positions and it's just a part of the culture here. Now there is one way that you can actually make more money as an employee working as a software engineer here in Norway and that is by working as a consultant. Now my salary is for a typical full-time employee position but as a consultant I have an email to show you the kind of offer that you can get here in Norway. Okay so check out this email. This is a recruiter email that I received in January and this is for a consultant position for a senior Java or .NET consultant and you can see the offer is basically much higher than the typical full-time employee offer and it's between 1 and 1.5 million kroner a year which basically is like 100 to 150 thousand dollars a year. This is very typical that I uh, noticed in Norway consultants always get better pay and I've spoken to a lot of people why this might be but it boils down to some accounting laws and the way that the companies can represent the consultants on their books and so it kind of evens out for them but then you have surplus that you can actually pay the employee. Now one thing that really grinds my gears here in Norway is that even with 10 years of experience working as a senior software engineer, the best kind of offer that I can get for a consulting job is still kind of less than what a junior would get in United States. But it's just the reality of living in Europe. And I'm pretty sure some of you might be frustrated for me saying this because I know there are countries that pay even less and I have sympathies for you guys because I come from such a country and I know that pain. So that is pretty much my main income here in Norway, just basically my job income. But there is one side income that I want to talk to you about. From there, we are going to also transition into the expenses and everything else. The side income I want to talk to you about is actually my garage because I don't own a car and the apartment that I live in actually comes with a garage place. I can rent it out. And so I make about a thousand and five hundred kroner a month from that, and which is about a hundred and fifty US dollars. And with that, I also want to give a quick mention to today's sponsor which is PDF Element. Like you wouldn't believe just how much stuff actually gets done using PDFs and one of those examples is the contract that I have to complete anytime I want to rent out my garage. So what I do is I take PDF Element to add fields, add text so that I don't have to recreate the entire contract. Okay so here is the infamous garage contract document that I have and you can see that it's like a very old style document very difficult to work with it's been scanned but it doesn't matter because I can just click edit here and I can add text for my own name, for example, Marco. You know, I can complete the rest of the fields, I can align everything. And then for the person who wants to rent from me, I can actually create a form. So here I can add a text field for their name and I can put it right here. I can set that it's the name and I can resize it. And it's so convenient because then I can copy paste these fields, align them. And you know, this one is for the address. And that way, when I send out this document, they can just fill it out really quickly and I didn't have to bother to recreate this in any kind of other application. Another thing that's really cool about PDF Element is that it's AI powered. It has these really advanced features. So for example, if you're working with a white paper, you can ask it questions about it, you can ask it to summarize it, and it can even detect AI generated content for you. You can even rewrite a PDF and explain it. So yeah, check out the link in the description, guys. It's a really great piece of software very polished and I highly recommend it. 
Alright, so I mentioned that the garage is actually included in my contract and I can rent it out, but what else is included in my contract and what does it actually cost to live here? So we can start off with the most important cost, which is the rent itself. It's called fin.no, used to find pretty much anything in Norway, but we're going to use it to look at different apartments and I took a little bit of time to isolate three or four different apartments that I think are kind of representative of the apartment that I live in and that some of my friends who are also engineers or work in similar positions that they have. So let's start with the first one. This is kind of like an artsy style apartment, very central downtown, and it's listed for 19,000 kroner a month, which is basically $1,900 a month. And I actually pay 18,800 kroner a month, so I think this is very kind of similar in terms of price range. Now, because this apartment is more central, it's smaller for the same price, and it also doesn't have included heating, as it's very usual for these older buildings to not have that. Now, moving on to the second apartment, which is much more similar to the one that I live in. It's kind of much further out. It's in a newer construction. You can see the style is a little bit different. It's a little more clean. It's a little bit more modern, but most importantly, everything is new. And that was very important for me because I had really bad experiences in my previous apartments when things started breaking and I didn't have connections to hire a handyman. So I actually ended up fixing a lot of it myself. And you can see here, for example, this room in particular is very, very typical of these apartments. It's like a secondary bedroom. Room. and this is the same size that I have here that I'm recording this video in. The view is directly into your neighbors and it's very typical for these like newer constructions. And this one is also listed for 19,000 kroner a month, but it's much bigger as you can see. And most likely for this kind of price, you actually get included heating, which is very important in the winter because that makes your electricity bills much lower. And electricity bills, if you don't pay for heating or hot water are pretty small. Basically they would be around 50 euros a month or something like that. Now, what if you actually want to buy a place. I have a lot of friends that actually bought apartments like a year and a half ago when there was this whole craze with like inflation and there was like really low interest rates and everybody was able to afford apartments. So let's take a look at two different apartments that are kind of similar to the ones that we looked at for renting and let's do a little bit of a calculation. How many actual yearly salaries does it cost for you to buy a very similar place? Okay, so here's an apartment that is like very centrally located. It's very beautiful. It's kind of on the smaller side, but it's very nicely furnished. And we can take a look here at the price. It's listed at eight and a half million kroner with a total price of basically 8.7, which is like 870,000 US dollars. If you look at that price and if you compare it to the actual income that we had before, you can see that it takes basically 10 years of full time before tax pay for an individual to afford such a place. And it was much easier to afford previously because the interest rates were lower. But let's take a look at another example where it's actually a newer construction. And for newer constructions, it's typical in Norway that you have to pay less down payment. This area is a little bit further out of town, but what I want to show you is the price of these different apartments. So you can see that for 55 square meters, you would actually have to pay, what was that? 7.5 million kroner. But keep in mind with a lower down payment, you might still be able to afford it. Although the problem with that is you have to pay the down payment even before the apartment is finished. And you can see all these stages where the sales start and then only then the construction will start and then you will be able to move in only in 2025. So that's the downside of buying a brand new place. But in general here on the DNB website, which is like the Bank of Norway, we can see that the interest rate is actually 4.3%, which is much higher than what was maybe a year and a half ago. It was maybe 1.7 or 2.2 max. So right now it's much harder to afford these apartments. And my personal opinion is that these kinds of places are actually going to start dropping in value in the following year, because I actually read the financial report of the Bank of Norway, and they are actually going to continue raising interest rates for 2024 and going into 2025. So all these places that I showed you are going to be way out of reach for a lot of people. And my assumption is that because of that, they're going to start dropping in value. Okay, so here's the app that I actually use to order groceries and food. And I just want to show you if we go to my profile and then we go into order history, you can see all my orders and what they cost. So actually, whenever you see the market, that's groceries and 373 kroner is basically $37. And that would be groceries for maybe a day, a day and a half. And then when you have this toast, that's me actually eating out this one particular meal that I really enjoy. And, you know, it's a really good toast, but I mean, $18 for a toast and delivery, it's kind of expensive. 
Now when it comes to other expenses such as electronics or maybe you want to buy a car or an electric bicycle, those things are always much more expensive in Norway than in other places of the world. And that's because taxes in general are quite high here. But the flip side of that is that you actually have free education and free healthcare here in Norway which are both excellent. Now when it comes to maybe working out and going to a gym that would cost you around $50 a month. As far as other expenses go, maybe transportation or something like that, owning a car here, especially in Oslo where there is really great public transport, is not the most economical option. First of all, because there is all kinds of taxes that you have to pay if you want to drive into town and finding parking is actually really difficult because there is a lot of trams. So just riding a bicycle is actually the most effective. It's actually like having a cheat code to the city and that's what I prefer. But if you want to ride the public transport that will cost you maybe 80 to 100 euros depending on the zone for a monthly ticket but with unlimited access to boats, trams, buses, and subway. Okay, so that's pretty much a wrap. Let me know in the comments, depending on where you live, what kind of income and expenses one can expect. But if I didn't mention some aspect that you really want to know about, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. So see you in the next video.